Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Amazon Web Services reInvent 2017, our fifth year covering AWS reInvent. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE Media with my co-host Stu Miniman. I'm so excited, 45,000 people, and boy, I remember when it was just a small, little, fast-growing company. We're here with Teresa Carlson, who's been there with us the whole way. She's a senior vice president of public sector. Teresa, welcome to theCUBE, great to see you. I'm always glad to be here on theCUBE. So, you've been running public sector, you've been really, I got to say, I gave a tweet, not to sound that I'm fawning over you right now, but you've really grown the business in a significant way, as Andy would say, in a meaningful way. Take us through, because it's, it's, it's almost mind-blowing. We have already had a few guests on theCUBE. I went to your breakfast. You are changing the game, but not without scar tissue. You've done a lot of hard work to get there. So one, congratulations. Thank you. But give us a state of the union right now for public sector, because you're winning, you're doing great, but it well, wasn't easy. No, it, it's not been easy, but it's been a lot of fun. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. And in fact, as you said, this is our sixth year of doing reInvent. And yesterday, or two days ago, we had our public sector breakfast, and it was so full, we got shut down by the fire marshals. So that is when you know that you have customers and partners showing up because they want to be there. But we have grown significantly, and that has been through the work of both working with customers and partners on security, compliance, policy, acquisition vehicles, to just make sure that we have the right balance of everything needed to really drive and grow the business in the right way. And as I've talked about, we didn't leave any stone unturned. We had to really go through all the hard processes to do this right. And I think it really has paid off because you never want to take shortcuts. Yep. And you want to make sure you're doing the right thing in order for customers to have better technology for us to help drive good government, good education. I got to say, one of the big trends we're seeing here in SiliconANGLE, theCUBE, and Wikibon is a, the public-private partnerships are accelerating. You're seeing public sector help on security to the private sector, private sector helping government move yes. faster. And so you're seeing a balance and an equilibrium coming together. But also, um, old guard companies, you sometimes have a federal division or a separate DNA culture. You guys don't, you have one culture at Amazon. But the striking thing for me is, is that you're now enabling companies to get into public sector that couldn't before. So I want to ask you specifically, is it like that now where you start to see new people come in yes. with solutions because you guys have done that heavy lifting where before they had to wait in line, get certified. Are we seeing new solutions? Are you enabling that? Is that actually happening? It absolutely is happening and we never forget our roots of startups here at AWS because they are really a huge reason why we exist. And for public sector, I saw a change. In my previous life, I never had venture capitalists or private equity firms come and say, we want our companies in government. We want, we're creating new education tech companies, which was really not so even heard of. It's a growth of. strategy for them. It's a huge growth strategy. So like a venture capitalists and private equity like Andreessen Horowitz, Madrona, C5, Bridgewater, we see, and they come to us saying, we have this portfolio, can you help us talk to them about how they get into government? And so as a result of that, we do sales and marketing, we work with them on FedRAMP, i.e. slash security compliance. Uh, we ensure that they understand the elements and components of how they work in government. And by the way, government loves that we are bringing in innovative new technologies. And we can also do that through the marketplace the AWS marketplace, which allows them to move faster, be more agile, and start getting that business. Yeah, Ter Teresa, I'm wondering if you could share a little bit more. Talk about innovation. We've been loving for years. I love when I talk about you know, you know, know, regional governments, you know, education, you get nonprofits under, under your umbrella, where you know, it used to be, you know, oh, I didn't have the budget, I can't move fast. Yeah. Now, you know, we're seeing some great innovation from, the, from, from the, the, the private side as well as some of the public-private you know, interactions. Definitely, and we, in fact, I was at, uh, in California about a month ago where we announced an innovation center with California Poly Technic you know, University, Cal Poly. And the president there, Jeff Armstrong, 
we, it is amazing. They literally had been looking at what AWS was doing and they took the pillars that they've been seeing us talk about for public sector and they created an innovation center to work on these opportunities and challenges in justice and public safety, health, agri, um, sex trafficking and child exploitation through seeing the, what Thor was doing and Thorn in the International Center for Missing and Exploited Children. How is this leveling the playing field? Because everyone, citizens, in the, at least in the United States, I'm sure it's happening in other markets as well, they want the government to move faster. Yes. And you guys are like the, the freight train that's out of control speed-wise, just more and more services. How does the government keep up? Because I would imagine that if I'm a government official or part in the public sector, oh my God, I can't handle Amazon, right. I can't <laughs> ride that beast, it's too, it's too strong. I mean, do they say that? Is it that the vibe? Or are they more, hey, I want you to do the, is it more your flywheel? Do they have to get involved? I mean, what's the relation, what's the sentiment of the, of the government? Well, they want to move fast. And in fact, in the US government, the White House does have an entire initiative now on modernization. You're seeing countries like the UK government go cloud native. Uh, you saw the country of Bahrain, which is going all in, in the cloud, and they've already established new policies and a cloud first policy of moving. But I would tell you, if you look at groups like the intelligence community in the US government, we just announced our secret region, and that allows them to have top secret capabilities, secret, unclassified, and our GovCloud, so they have uh, capabilities in, across the entire spectrum of workloads. And what they've always said to us and our other customers is, can we build cloud tools? Could we build a cloud? Yes, but can we innovate at the rate and speed you're innovating? No, because we, we provide them innovation ahead of their demand. Yeah, T Teresa, I remember when GovCloud launched and it was like, yeah. wow, yeah. this is like AWS isn't just a monolithic uh, you know, service you know, around the globe and everything. Seems like Secret Region kind of you know, goes, goes along that line. Um, how does kind of the dynamic between AWS as a whole and, and what you're doing in your organization, how do you work through that and, and kind of balance, you know, I, I right. want services around the globe yet to you yeah, know, meet, meet it, the needs of your clients. Well, well, on the GovCloud region, you know, that, that was our first entree into doing something unique for government. Right. That region has grown 185% year over year since 2011, and we just announced a second region on the East Coast for GovCloud, US GovCloud. The interaction with our services team is amazing. I mean, Charlie Bell, who runs all of our services, we have a tight relationship. We talk to our government customers in these regions, understand their priorities, and then we roll them out, and it's really that simple. They get the exact same thing uh, in their classified regions as we give our other customers, it's just their network. Well, you got the, Janu uh, the date set, I'm looking at my picture here I took. Yes. Uh, June 20th and 21st, save the date, AWS Public Sector Summit, AWS PS Summit, as it's called on Twitter hashtag. Um, yeah. Every year you started out in a little conference room, in a ballroom, yeah. bigger <laughs> hotel, now the convention center. Yep. Massive growth. And the so, Cube was there this year, which Cube I was, was happy. There. I mean, that makes it legitimate. Yeah. And the Cube's there, it's a, we'll be there this year. Good, yes. Um, but of course, this is the growth, VCs, private equity. Yep. This is a growth market. So this is not a, a unique siloed market anymore. You guys right. have leveled the, the silos within Amazon to go, we didn't ever had silos, but you allow Agile to come to the government. What's next for you? You've done, an, you've done a great job. You're now cruising altitude. What's your growth strategy for Public Sector Summit? How are you going to take it to the next level? Well, you know, even though we have grown a lot, and thank you to our customers and partners, but we really are just scratching the surface. It is day one still for us. And our customers are really just still getting going on a lot of mission critical workloads. They're moving in things that they really hadn't thought about. They're starting to, to do things like hire more developers in government so they can take advantage of the tools you, a lot you saw yesterday. But additionally, what we're seeing is we are spending a lot of time going into countries around the world, helping countries set a strategy for digital transformation. New jobs growth, new companies, economic development, how do they train and educate for a cloud-based workforce, we call it. And that's really fun to go in and, and tell governments, look, 
you really have to prepare your country for a digital transformation. And again, if you look at groups like Bahrain, what the UK have done, they are doing that and they are making a massive transformation around this. Final question for you, what are you most proud of looking back since you joined AWS seven years ago? I think it was seven years ago you started? Yep, seven about years seven ago years this ago. Congratulations, what are you most proud of? And then two, what do you think about the most as you execute day to day in growing the business? Well, I would say that, you know, the fact that I've had an amazing brand to work with, you know, out of the gate, Amazon was such a great brand. And the fact that, again, based on Think Big, Andy Jassy's leadership of really he and I having a conversation together saying, we could change the world and make it a better place. And you've heard me say a lot in my openings, we have two themes that we talk about in public sector, which is paving the way for disruptive innovation and making yeah. the world a better place. And if I look back, it's really the things that we're helping to do this, that we are driving new policies. Companies are seeing results, agencies, and we are making the world a better place. And I would yeah. say that that's humbling and amazing and we're just getting going. As the chief of public sector, you're like, you've seen it grow and you're running it every day, you got a great team. Do you have a pinch me moment once in a while? Like, have these, just kind of say, wow, what have you done? Well, it, I think the pinch me moments are when I hear the customers and partners tell me how fast they're moving and the results they have. And you know, we, we always have a goal of really working with our mission partners and, and we've hired now uh, more than 17,000 veterans at Amazon and growing. Yep. And it's things like that that we can do to really help that transformation and not just talk the talk, but walk the walk as a company. Uh, and, I, and I would say for you know where we want to go and what I sort of worry about, our growth, I, I, I guess I worry and stay up a little bit at night to make sure that we keep our hiring bar high, that we really maintain our focus on customer obsession. Security. Security <laughs> is all, I mean, security is always on my mind. Sleep at all of us, keep you up a lot. No, I don't really, <laughs> no, I, I know. But the last thing I would say is just really thinking through um, ensuring that we're continually pushing hard. Like that we that we stay really, we have a little bit of sharp elbows going in, we're trying to change policy. We don't give up on the things that really matter for doing this massive transformation uh, yeah. for countries, for state and local agencies, for feds, for educational institutions around cloud transformation. I really respect your results and I love your hard charging style. It's fantastic, your success obviously speaks for itself. We'll see you at the summit in, uh, in June. This is theCUBE, Teresa Carlson, Thank the you. Chief of the Public Sector Business. Business. She's the Vice President of Public Sector. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. More live coverage here at AWS reInvent after this short break.